Well, the miners mine the rock. That goes to the mineral extraction plant where we grind it up. This separates, makes all the minerals separate. And then we have a separation process depending on the type of mineral we're dealing with. And then the concentrate or the, con the valuable minerals we've got together, we smelt them and that gets rid of all the sulfur and iron that is unwanted and we left just with the copper. These mines are just unimaginably big. Um, a typical copper mine would mine something like 50 million tons a year of ore alone. Um, probably the same again in waste rock just to get to the ore. Um, that means they're mining about 10,000 tons of rock an hour. An absolutely astronomical scale. And then this is ground up. Um, the energy use is enormous on this as well. Um, it is estimated that 5% of the world's energy goes into grinding rocks. Well, the modern separation process for base minerals in particular is to separate them based on their hydrophobicity or their affinity for water. Um, the ones we want are sulfide minerals. They have a, a, a combination of metal and sulfur. The ones we don't want are a combination of, um, of oxides. And so chemically, they're very different. We can add a chemical like a xanthate to attach preferentially to the sulfide minerals. This leaves them looking um, hydrophobic or slightly oily, if you like. Uh, they don't want to be in water anymore. So when we bubble air through it or bubbles through it, the, these small particles stick to the bubbles to get out of the water. They rise to the surface and they form a froth that overflows. And in this way, we collect the ones we want and leave behind the ones we don't want. At the moment, in the world, about 70% of the copper is produced in this, what I call the standard flotation or grind and flotation process. Um, there's a new, fairly new process where we simply dissolve the metal straight out of the rock um, and about 30% of the world's copper is produced in that way. I, pres I think that in the future that will become more prevalent. Well, in my research team at Imperial College, we take a very different approach to other people in the world. We focus on the physics of the process, so we're interested in the structure of the froth, how the froth flows, how the liquid moves within that, how the particles move within the liquid within the froth. So a very complicated, multi-phase process. It's also dynamic. The bubbles are bursting, they're flowing, um, and they're changing all the time. So that is our interest. And through that, we've discovered a few unique things that nobody else knew before. For example, that the rate of bursting on the surface is absolutely critical to the quality of the separation we achieve. And so our current research is focusing on how we can control the rate of bursting to give us the absolute best possible separation between the valuable minerals and the non-valuable ones. Even a minor improvement in the separation process has enormous financial implications. At the moment, we extract maybe or recover maybe 90% of the valuable mineral that comes into the process, and 10% is discarded. Now, a typical copper mine um, of the, the scale that we're talking about in South America and in the US, um, an extra 1% recovery of that mineral is worth about ooh, $20 million a year, and that's continuous. So. Um, it is the financial incentives are very big for us to get this right. We use about 5% of the world's energy in grinding rocks to the size where they can be separated using flotation. Now, if we can bring, and that is partly because of the, the limitations of the flotation process and partly in the mineralogy and, the, and getting the minerals liberated. But if we can raise that size maybe by a factor of 10, let's say to separating them on the basis of one millimeter, we can reduce the energy in grinding tremendously. This has huge sustainability benefits, huge carbon dioxide benefits, and enormous cost implications for the operations as well.